Okay, so which which markets and time frame do we do we normally look at, right? Uh, one of the best ways to use Fibonacci extension is really, uh, as mentioned over here, markets with strong liquidity. What what do we mean by strong liquidity? Liquidity, right? So it means that uh, we're looking at uh, mm, the major major pairs like the euro dollar, pound dollar, Aussie dollar, basically dollar denominated pairs, right? These are pairs that has more people trading on them. Okay, so when, uh, when there's a higher trading volume, it is a lot more liquid. You don't get a lot of uh, wicks. Okay, so all this ties in with the fact that you want to trade, you want to use Fibonacci on markets that has less noise, less wild wicks. Okay, so the shadow of the candlestick, right? You don't really see huge spikes all over the place okay and fibonacci is a very powerful tool based on my professional experience i can guarantee you guys that the institutions are looking at fibonacci extensions all right fibonacci retracements as well okay so being able to use fibonacci correctly would also be able to help you guys identify the key levels that the institutions are looking at all right, so the, the, the ball is no longer always in the bigger boy's court, right? So you guys are also now able to snatch the ball from them, so, so to speak. Okay, so what do we mean by higher time frames? Okay, so you want to use Fibonacci on higher time frames. So you're talking about things like the, over here we have the 30 minute chart, the H1 chart, okay, the four hour and the daily chart. So if you guys are, are, are intraday traders, these are really the best time frames to look at, all right? If you are a swing trader like me, all right, you generally look at the H1, H4, daily, weekly, and monthly, all right? So higher time frames, you get less of the less of the the whipsaw, right? What we call the whipsaw action. Okay, so without without the whipsaw action, okay, it makes it easier to see the clear movements. All right, so let me just move on. All right, uh, Jennifer, you're asking, how about a three-minute time frame? Okay, so three-minute time frame, right, is going to have a lot more noise, okay, because there are a lot of people scalping, and generally, when when we when 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 people are scalping, they look for strong graphical price areas, which you're talking about support resistances, okay. So it sometimes Fibonacci do exist alone. Uh, there's one just just one key Fibonacci level I'll show you guys later where there's no support resistance but price just reacts there as well. Okay, so uh, Sheng, you're also asking higher time frames mean means monthly as opposed to daily lower time frame. Not necessarily, right? Like I mentioned, it is really based on your 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 style as a trader. Okay, so for a day trader, for an intraday trader. The four hour chart could mean a longer time frame for you as compared to a swing trader, right? So a swing trader, the longer time frame will be like a weekly, right? But what I'm proposing here is that Fibonacci, right? Fibonacci, you should try to avoid using it on anything lesser than I would say the lowest I would really go is the 15 minute chart, right? Anything lesser than 15 minute is really a lot of whipsaw, right? So over here on the slides, what we have, you can see all this strong spikes right which is what we mentioned in the slides earlier the wild wicks okay so we have all these strong spikes and price especially in this zone is very choppy as seen with the blue line is just chopping all over the place right this is definitely the lower time frame is going to be a bit harder to draw fibonacci levels as well okay so sheng i hope that answers your question jennifer i hope i've answered your question sing what Okay, you've never used TradingView before. No, no worries. I will show you how to find the Fibonacci extension. Uh, I will quickly move on to it as well. So this is an example on, on the slide. This is, a, this is a very clear example of an unclear market structure. All right, so you see there are a lot of long wicks, random long wicks all over the place. Market is really, really choppy. This generally happens on a highly illiquid currency pair generally the exotics and also on the lower time frame right now we go over to the next slide what we see here is a clear picture of a clear market structure of course there are wicks but you can see the general movement of the market right it moves in one 
general straight line probably go sideways over here before pushing higher and then after that it goes on the downtrend all, all over again forming a clear double bottom pattern and then it push higher right and then after that it goes lower so you're starting to see that when you zoom out right you tend to get a clearer picture an overall picture of uh of how price is reacting uh this is this this ties in with i'm, I'm sure some of you would have already heard you know the trend is your friend, right? The trend is your friend until it ends or don't trade against the trend. So you want to always be in line with as, as much as possible, try to be in line with the trend. That's one. Second is that, you know, you, you don't want to be unnecessarily whipsawed out of place if you are unable to pick the right swing highs and swing lows and the middle point for your Fibonacci extension. Okay? So you want to zoom out a bit understand the clear market structure, then that is where you can start drawing your Fibonacci extensions. And I'll show you guys in, in a while, right? Some, uh, some slides, how we draw the Fibonacci extensions. And then when it's time, I will go into trading view to show you guys the charts. So always remember, we want to draw Fibonacci, whether it's retracements or extensions, extensions a bit more complicated. We want to draw it with a clear market structure. We don't want to zoom in too much and end up missing the forest for the trees. All right. Okay, so Sheng, we have another question. Do we visually determine whether wicks are long, wild, or normal? What about using actual number range, like 100 points on a daily chart or something like that? Okay, so this, this way is using a range of 100 points on a daily chart. Yes, you can do it, but you have to be very clear what is the average number of pips or points that the, the pair moves on a daily or on, on that time frame that you're looking at, right? So you really have to go and backtest each individual session and see how to, you know, draw the, what do you call that? Calculate the number of points that price has moved and then you adjust accordingly, right? So in my, in my personal opinion, I think it's definitely better to visually determine whether weeks are long or while. You, you just by eyeballing, you generally would be able to see it already okay so it also takes a bit of practice right nothing comes completely naturally okay so it, it takes a bit of practice okay so maybe i'll show a bit uh, uh, of it on the pound dollar and the dollar franc both dollar denominated pairs so very liquid and you will see that they, they do have very clear market structure so the first thing that i really want to talk about is uh, fibonacci trend line right so over here we're talking about extension the difference between the fibonacci extension as compared to the Fibonacci retracement is that the extension takes three points. Okay, so you have a starting point and then after you have a middle point and then you have an ending point. So example, we have a chart over here where what we see is a very clear market structure, right? Price started from the top, all right? It pushed all the way to the bottom, okay? And then after that, price uh, bounced all the way to to form another high. So it's a very clear structure. And when you draw Fibonacci extension, there is normally uh, a setting that allows you to turn on the trend line. Now, what do we mean by this Fibonacci trend line being a very good guide? Okay, is that the Fibonacci trend line should actually follow price movement quite closely. So it means that the price pattern should try to stick as close, okay, to the Fibonacci trend line itself. So let's say we take this is an extension. We take the starting point from here, point number one, the second point, point number two, and then after that, the ending point, we take it at point number three, right? So we have three points and we extend it, right? We find a 100% extension of which you can see that the market pushed all the way down, spiked to the 100% and immediately reacted off from there. So once we find this key, so 100% is one of the key extension levels, right? So once we find a key extension level, it is very possible to actually put our entry just slightly above it, okay? So to, to, to get that, to get that, to get that sharp entry, and then we can play a reaction of such key Fibonacci levels. All right, I, I hope you guys are clear so far. So let me quickly just go to trading view. Okay, and as I've uh, promised you, saying what, right? I want to show you how to find the Fibonacci tool. So on trading view on the left hand side, okay, you will have this column, this uh, toolbox. 
and there will be this funny, I think it's one, two, three. Okay, it's the third one. Okay, the third one, you have this small arrow, you click on it, and you will be able to find trend days fit extension. All right, so that is your Fibonacci extension tool. Okay, so that is your Fibonacci extension tool. When you click on it, okay, it allows you to select three points. Okay, let me just move over to a plain canvas. Okay, so it allows you to select three points, point one, point two, point three. Okay, let me just change the color of all this. Okay, so as you can see, there's this trend line here, right? This dotted trend line. You can click on the gear and there'll be a settings under style. You can select, you can toggle on and off the trend line, not to worry. Okay, generally, we like to extend lines right so that, you know, price, we can see where the levels that price are hitting. So these are some of the key levels that we look at more often. Okay, so this is how we draw, how we get out the Fibonacci extension tool. Okay, so it's on the left-hand side of trading view, the third box, you can click on the arrow, you can find this trend-based fit extension. All right, saying what? So I hope that answers your question. Okay, so back to the chart. What I have here, let me use an example by, by Sheng. Okay, let's go to the pound dollar. Okay, so as you can see on the monthly, okay, let me just, on the monthly, you can see price movements. All right, more on the monthly, you can see price movements that are very uh, clear cut, right? There's a, there's a clear drop. All right, and then after that, price sort, sort of goes sideways right into this consolidation phase just get the pen out into this sort of consolidation phase before pushing higher and then coming back down again right so there is a very clear uh, market structure right there's very clear market structure so that's on the monthly i'm taking the extremes okay and if i were to let's say go down to the one minute okay on the one minute we still do see quite clear market structure. Why is this so? Is because back to the slides, as mentioned earlier, okay, markets with strong liquidity generally show clearer market structure. All right? And if I were to use an exotic pair, let's say the dollar czar. Okay, on the one hour, you're going to see something like that. This is not a clear market structure. You're going to see price just chopping up and down over the, 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 the chart, right? You can zoom out a bit more and it's going to look really ugly. You have this, look at the debt on the dollars. You have this one crazy wild wig that seems to be extending to nowhere, right? On the 21st of April, very recently, right? And that's on the extreme, the one minute, okay? So if you're trading on a highly illiquid pair like the dollars are even on the monthly go back to the monthly time frame the extreme you would still be able to see clear market structures okay push up goes down push higher sideways continues its upward move and then it comes back down all right so you want to use it on the bigger time frame and on the uh, rather rather than the lower time frames that's the first thing secondly you want to use it on a liquid pair okay so especially if you guys are trading the the if you guys are trading the illiquid pairs you want to use it on a bigger time frame for fibonacci if you guys are even if it's the very liquid pair okay you still want to generally use it on the slightly bigger time frame all right so that's 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 what we have over over here okay so an example will be the fibonacci okay so i, I have to go back to the fibonacci Okay, so the Fibonacci trend line will be, for example, just now when we're drawing the, the extension, right? 0 0.1, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. So a good example of a Fibonacci trend line where, 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 where price actually follows the, the, the trend line, a good example will be this area, right? You can see that price actually tests the trend line multiple times without really chopping around the trend line, right? So on this leg, price actually holds, uh, the, comes close to the trend line very, very beautifully. What you do not want, okay, is price deviating away from the trend line like that. So it comes away so far and then after that, it pushes up again. You don't want something like that where there's a huge space where price deviates really, really far from the Fibonacci trend line. Okay, so this is, this example here has both a good 
and a bad example. Right, so the best example will be something like that where you use a Fibonacci tool, you draw it from the swing low all the way to swing high. Okay, if you want to take this, can be considered wall wick, you can take this point and then after you draw it down to this low. So you can tell that price generally sticks close right to the Fibonacci trend line. Right, and then after that, of course, you see price pushed up, okay, reacted at the 7860 and immediately came back down. So this 7860 extension is actually a pretty powerful uh, Fibonacci extension as well. All right, so Charles, you're asking, what's the purpose of using Fibonacci extension? Uh, the basic purpose of using Fibonacci extension is to find price targets, right? You want to find price targets. The more, the more advanced uh, way of drawing Fibonacci extension is also, can also to help you find price support levels okay you can find price support levels depending on how you draw it but ideally right the most basic way sticking to basic right is to use fibonacci extension to find price targets okay to see how far price can extend right that's the idea of the name behind fibonacci extensions you want to find out how far price can extend so an example will be let's say you have price pushing higher right so price is on an uptrend you want to find out how far price can go, right? You are you really have no idea how far price can go. This is where you use Fibonacci extension, taking point one, and this is point two, and this is point three. All right, you extend it upwards, right, and you get to see that you know these are the possible price targets. Okay, okay, Linda, you're asking, can we exclude? weeks when we are drawing the, the fit. Generally, what I do is I include the wicks. Okay, I will generally include the wicks, right? Unless, unless, okay, the wick is something that is really out of the ordinary. So, like right now on dollars are there's this really, on the monthly, there's this really, really huge wick, right? So, we know that this is probably due to the, this probably due to some news, right? Uh, and, and, and because of that, you know, price just sort of reacted very strongly and then after that price came back down. So I may choose to ignore this wick, okay? But at the end of the day, I try to include the wick, okay, uh, inside the Fibonacci drawings. So Edwin, you're asking, are liquid markets the same with volatile markets? General, no, they are not, okay? Liquid markets just means that there is very high volume being traded on them, right? So you can have... Uh, very liquid market that is really in a very wide, broad range, in a sideways ranging mode, okay? But they are not volatile at all, okay? So they move very nicely up, support to resistance, and back to support, back to resistance, back to support, back to resistance. So they trade very nicely, right? But that does not mean they are volatile, okay? Whereas a volatile market, you can see uh, huge wicks, generally bigger wicks, okay? Or, or, or very huge candle, uh, candle bodies, Okay, so with that, let, let me just uh, move on a bit more. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, there is this, you know, 7860. There's this 7860 Fibonacci extension, which was very key. Give me a moment. Okay, so just now I drew the Fibonacci extension, right? Using the same example, Okay, we, we zoom out a bit. There is a clear market structure. All right, uh, this, this chart over here, there seems to be a bit of long wicks. So it may not be a very liquid market, but it's definitely volatile, right? There, there are quite a bit of long wicks here. Looks a bit like Aussie dollar if you ask me, right? Okay, so we choose the Fibonacci extension. Okay, starting from this point, there is a clear market structure where price goes down, bounces back up, and comes down again. This is what we like to look out for, okay? This is otherwise known as a zigzag, okay? So markets generally do quite a big, uh, quite a bit of zigzag. Okay, so there are many kinds of zigzags. There's a normal zigzag where in an uptrend, okay, the first move is pretty strong and then the pullback is a short one. And then after that is another strong move in an uptrend. 
Downtrend is the opposite, okay, for a regular zigzag. All right, so that, that is one type of zigzag. Okay, we call it the regular zigzag. All right, the second type of zigzags that we generally look out for is known as the irregular. Okay, it's uh, pretty common sense, right? Regular and irregular. Okay, so an irregular zigzag will sometimes have deep extensions, okay? So you have a small impulsive move, and then after that, a deep extension, and then after that, another uh, impulsive move, all right? So this could be bullish, all right? The opposite is true as well, okay? You have a small impulsive move, a deep ex uh, retracement, and then after that, another small impulsive move again. So that's an irregular zigzag. So uh, I give you guys a bit of time, okay? To, 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 to just absorb the difference between a regular and an irregular zigzag. Okay, so back to our example over here, we have uh, we have the clear movement okay of a zigzag with uh, first movement and then a small retracement and other movement. That is where we can use Fibonacci extension point one, point two, point three. We project down project downwards, okay? And we see that there's a 7860 over here. So this 7860, if you really want to chase the trade, you can actually take a shot down to this level. Otherwise, it's more prudent to be patient. Like in our previous example, put your entry slightly higher, right? This can be your entry. And you can actually use this as an entry to play the bounce off, okay? So that is... That is really how we use Fibonacci extension. Okay, so uh, okay, I okay, wow, a lot of questions. Okay, so the difference between a Fibonacci expansion and extension. Okay. Now, the the difference. Okay, so Fibonacci is going to be a bit confusing, right? The difference. Okay, give me a give me a moment. The, the Fibonacci extension. Okay, uses three points instead of uh, two points, right? So Fibon Fibonacci extension that we are using right now takes three points. There's always a starting, there's always the middle, there's always the ending, right? The Fibonacci expansion, right, is uh, different in the sense that you want to see where, if I'm not wrong, it takes two points, okay? Fibonacci expansion. Okay, let me just... Uh, just be sure about this. Okay, Fibonacci expansion is really, you want to see the expanded movement of the original retracement, right? You want to see the expanded movement of the original retracement. So an example, let me just go back to trading view. Okay, what there's a lot of drawings all over. Okay, so I'm going to erase all drawings. Again, a clean canvas. Okay, so a Fibonacci extension is you want to see how far the move can extend. Okay, you want to see how far the move can extend, right? Whether it can go higher, further, okay? Now, the expansion, expansion is basically, let's say price goes up, okay? And there is a retracement, right? There's a retracement. You can take, okay? A retracement. You can use the retracement tool, right? And you can look for the the upside. Okay, the upside of it, where you can see that if the retracement, okay, if if this is the retracement price pulls back down, right? You want to see the the expansion of it, right? You would see whether if the if the retracement surpasses the 100%, there is this 127.20 expansion, right? It's a, it's a further expansion of the Fibonacci level, okay? So that is how you, that's the difference between Fibonacci expansion and extension. The key idea is that Fibonacci extension, extension takes three points, okay? The expansion only takes two points, okay? Okay, there are a lot of questions coming in, so I'm going to go go through them. Give me a moment, right? If I if I miss your questions, just <laughs> spam it again, okay? So okay, so Edwin, you're asking, are liquid markets the same as volatile? Okay, no, I've answered this before. 
uh, liquid markets the same as volatile markets. Uh, are there other, Linda, you're also asking, are there other Fibonacci levels more important than others or are they all importantly the same? Right, while there are Fibonacci, while each Fibonacci levels, you will see slight reaction, okay? There are stronger Fibonacci levels as compared to others, right? So since we are covering extension today, okay, so the key extension levels will be the 61.8, the 7860, the 100%, and the 161.8. Okay, so these are the key extension levels, right? I, I, I circle them here. So if, 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 if you guys want to take a screenshot, you guys can take a screenshot. All right, why I say they are more important. Now, if you guys remember, I shared with you guys the, the zigzag, the zigzag pattern, okay? In every zigzag pattern, what we really want to see is this thing called the A equals to C, right? So if you guys do follow Elliott wave, which is a completely different topic altogether, so this can be the first wave, you can say this wave A, and then after that, this wave B, the pullback, and then after the wave C, right? Now in every zigzag, whether it's a regular zigzag, irregular zigzag, the most powerful level that you want to see that you want to see for an extension, okay, it's actually the 100%. I, I will actually cover this later, right? So, but since we're on this topic, it's actually the 100%, which means the first impulsive wave is the same as the ending impulsive wave, in impulsive wave, okay? And, and it's at this 100% Fibonacci extension that you tend to see very strong market reaction, okay? So I will get to that in a while, uh, Linda, so just be patient. Okay, so Mac, uh, McWin, you're asking, how do I know it's re irregular or irregular when we want to trade? Again, we look at market structure. Okay, let's go back to the chart. Okay, I want to use uh, I want to use a major pair, so I'm going to use a uh, euro dollar. I don't want to use uh, exotic. Okay, so let's uh, do a bit of practice. Uh. Let's do a bit of practice. Now, I'm just going to, I'm just going to show you guys, okay, to keep this here as a good, what do you call that? A hint, okay? So, a normal zigzag will look something like that. Strong impulsive, small retracement, and followed by a strong impulsive. That's a normal zigzag, okay? It's bullish, okay? A irregular, okay? You have a small impulsive, a deep retracement that can lead to a Fibonacci expansion on the downside, and then another small impulsive. So, you have the regular at the top, the regular the first type, and the irregular on the second type. Okay, so now we have the euro dollar on the monthly. Can you guys tell me, is this a regular zigzag or a irregular zigzag? Okay, while you guys uh, type in the answer, okay, I'm going to go through a bit more questions, see which one are similar, and I will try to group them together. Okay, you guys are, okay, regular, 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 regular. Okay, so this is a regular zigzag, okay? It's uh, for those of you who, who, who are saying that, um, who are saying that it's irregular, don't be tricked, all right? Look at the, where the ending point is for the deep retracement. The deep retracement of the irregular is beyond the starting point, okay? It's beyond the starting point of the first point, right? Point one, when we do an extension, it's going to be something like that for irregular. Point one. 0.2, right? So that is that is uh, irregular, okay? Contrast, compare this, okay, the irregular to this one. Look at the ending point of the retracement. Okay, is it beyond the starting point or is it not? It is not, right? It's above, right? It's actually a lower high. I mean, a higher low, sorry. It's actually a higher low. So this is actually a regular zigzag. Okay, so this is a regular zigzag. All right. Now, I'm going to scroll back a bit. Okay. This one, is it a regular or irregular? Okay. Is it a regular or irregular? Okay. 
Okay, fantastic. Yeah, you guys are getting it now. Very good. This is an irregular zigzag. Okay, because the ending point of the retracement is very deep. It has cut below, okay, in a bullish environment, it has cut below the starting point of where we will draw the extension. All right, so now that you guys are getting the hang of this, okay, just remember how to identify regular and irregular zigzags. Then you can choose your three points to draw the Fibonacci extension. So some of the questions over here is actually asking, what does it mean to uh, to, to, to be a, what, what is a Fibonacci extension? Let me, let me just explain to you guys, okay? So the market moves, okay, in this is the first point. Let me just draw this, is the first point. It, let's say the market is making a zigzag, right? Something like that. Okay. We have three points here. Okay, point one, which will be the three points for our extension. Point two. Sorry, my circle is a bit off. Drawing with a mouse is tough. And point three. Right. So we're going to use a Fibonacci extension. Okay, taking point one, point two, and to point three. So what this means, okay, where the extension level means is really when we say that price is extending 61.8, right? There's a Fibonacci extension of 61.8. Let's look at the first level. It means that price from point three has moved 61.8% of the first movement, okay? If you can tell, if, if you guys can estimate, right, this movement here is 61% of this entire first movement. Okay, so that is the meaning of an extension, right? So when we see that we want a very key extension, now remember I was mentioning the 100%. So when price moves to the 100%, wait, uh, give me a moment. I'm going to, why do I have so many arrows? It's like duplicating. Okay, so when price moves 100%, what this means is that it is 100% of the original move, okay? From the starting point to the ending point, right? It is 100% of the original move. That is what we mean by Fibonacci extension, okay? This is what we mean by Fibonacci extension. Now, if price goes even higher, okay? Price goes all the way to 161.8, right? What does this mean? It means that price has moved 161.8 times, okay, of the original move. All right, so I hope you guys understand this is how Fibo, this is uh, Fibonacci extension. This is what it means. We want to find how far price can extend based on the original move. Okay, how far price can extend based on the original move. All right, so I hope that answers your question and that you guys are clear on how to identify, okay, irregular, irregular zigzags, okay? So now, another exercise over here. Okay, we have price pushing down, coming back up, and then coming back down. Is this a regular or an irregular zigzag? Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, you guys are starting to really get a hang of this extension and identifying zigzags. So this is a regular zigzag, right? So an example, okay, an example. Let's say price, okay, price is something like that, right? Right now we have price like that, okay? Benefit of hindsight, huh? hindsight 2020. Okay, so price push down, clear movement, price goes down, price pulls back up. We have three points for our Fibonacci extension. Yes, Samuel, you're right, regular bearish extension, okay? You draw a Fibonacci extension, taking the wick, Okay, because these are not wild swings. Okay, this is a wick. All right, point one, you draw, this is a bearish move. Point one, point two, okay, you see that price is actually quite close to the Fibonacci trend line. To point three, okay, again, price is hugging the Fibonacci trend line very nicely. And you can very easily, okay, if price is going down, you can very easily find three possible take profit levels, right? You can have one possible take profit level at a 61.8 here. Yeah, I'm going to put a green line so that, you know, you guys can use it as a take profit. The next possible take profit level is at the 7860, which is the last swing low. And then, of course, you have the 100%, which is also a key Fibonacci level, right? So you have three TPs, right? TP1, TP2, TP3. And you can actually go short, right? 
Okay, this is a bit slow, but oh, sorry. Yeah, so you can actually go short and you see price hit your first TP, hit your second TP, okay, and reverse from there. So this is, you can actually use this, all right, as sort of uh, to, to find where your price targets are in terms of Fibonacci extension. Okay, so that is uh, that is uh, that is an example of first identifying on a clear market structure, you identify the zigzag, okay, and then after that, you draw the Fibonacci extension. So something like that. Okay. Now I've also gone through the, so you, so this was the before and then you see price goes down. You can actually play, if you're an intraday trader, you can actually play the short drop, right? You can play a short drop to the 7860, right? And if this 7860, you're very confident that price is going to bounce from there. Of course, I would always advise anyone to not just base anything off Fibonacci alone, right? you need a confluence of factors okay over here you can actually have an entry and look at where price reverse okay so price bounces up you can start taking a retracement from the high to low because there's a completed movement and see how far price can retrace back i think over here is the nice 61.8 in line with a graphical swing high over here okay so if i'll erase all drawing there is a nice graphical swing high over here. Look at it. Price tested the level twice. Okay, so that is the you that is using a 78.6 percent uh, Fibonacci extension. This is the hundred percent Fibonacci extension. Okay, so you have clear movements, right? Starting here. Can you guys tell me whether this is a regular or irregular zigzag? Let me just erase all drawings. Okay, regular, right? Fantastic. Okay, so uh, okay, so Jackson, you're asking cryptocurrency can be used. Uh, can we use Fibonacci extension? Yes, you can. Right, as long as there's a chart, you can use Fibonacci uh, extensions. Uh, on it, Fibonacci retracement, Fibonacci extensions. Okay. Um, Sonia, you actually asked a question, which is pullback. I, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Okay, so maybe you want to try to explain uh, a bit more. What you're referring to by when when you ask the question which is pullback okay uh another question is where should stop loss be right generally stop loss there are many ways of setting a stop loss some people like to use indicators to place the stop loss some people like to use market structure some people like to have a predetermined set of stop loss say maybe 30 40 pips or maybe 10 pips that kind of thing right so stop loss is really dependent on your style and your method as a trader. Okay, so Sonia, I hope I answered your question. Okay, Kwasi, you're asking, is this a counter trend trading tool? No, it is not a counter trend trading tool, right? It is uh depending on depending on the direction, it's always best to draw the Fibonacci extension in the direction of the trend. Okay, try never to draw it against the trend, right? Uh you can use it as a counter trend trading tool. It is possible, but you need to first understand the bigger picture, where the trend is heading before you draw the Fibonacci extension, okay, on a clear market structure. Okay, uh, <laughs> you're asking a very impossible <laughs> to answer question. How do I know if it goes up or goes down? <laughs> well, if we really know if the market is going up or down, then you know, we'll be making a lot of money. All right. Um, the idea is to always look at the long-term picture. All right. You never know for sure whether a market is going to go up or down. Okay. Look for the long-term picture. Look for the momentum. Right. And then play in the direction of that momentum. Okay. So that is on a separate topic in itself. All right. But I hope that answers your question. Okay, Sudhir, you are saying in your trading view, you only take two points on Fibonacci. I think you're using the wrong tool again. You need to use the extension, okay? So it's on the left-hand side, there's this column, one, two, three, select trend-based fit extension. A trend-based fit extension. All right, hope that answers your question. Okay, okay, so Sonia, thanks for clarifying, okay? Sometimes a retracement is called a pullback, sometimes the extension is called a pullback. Okay, an extension 
should generally not be called a pullback. Okay, uh, extension should be a push in the direction of the trend, right? Because look over here, all right? Let me just clear all the drawings. Okay, and go down to say maybe the four hour time frame, something that is in the middle. Okay, so I have very clear movement, right? There is a price is downtrend. Okay, price is downtrend. This one strong push down. And then after that, there's a pullback. Okay, this is a pullback. A retracement is also called a pullback. All right. And then after that, another push down. All right. So we have point one, point two, point three. This is a regular zigzag. All right. So I'm going to use Fibonacci extension to draw point one, point two, point three. Okay. And you see that price actually tapped the 61.80. Okay. At this area, fluctuated, flirted around the level a bit before reversing. And then, of course, when it reverses, what can we do? We can play to 61.8, 23.6 being our first take profit. You can take profit at every single Fibonacci level, but the key levels for retracement will be 23.6. All right, breaking 23.6, you'll see that price goes to 61.80 over here, right? Flirted around there a bit before pushing higher. So you actually do have a pretty tidy uh, entry and a pretty tidy take profit. Okay. But the idea is that a pullback should not be should not be in, used interchangeably with an extension. Okay, a pullback can be used interchangeably with a retracement. All right. So Sonia, I hope that answers your question. Okay. So uh, Singhwat, you actually, if you are unable to see candles, okay, on the top bar for trading view, right? Next to the time frame, first you see the thicker code, right? The symbol, and then you see the time frame, and then on the right hand side you see the bar style. You can actually choose the bar style. You can change between line chart, can change between candles, okay, or you can change the bar chart. All right. So, uh, Singhua, I hope that answers your question. <coughs> okay. So, uh, Bartholomew, you're asking, please show an example of flip extension with retracement to get Fibonacci confluence. Okay, so an example that I would normally do, let's uh, do an analysis. Uh, I think one of you requested just now, live example on say dollar cat, right, Charles? Okay, so let's get to that. Okay. Okay, uh, Singh, I'm not sure what you mean by you're seeing uh, just a line. Okay, maybe uh, you want to get a proper chart, you can go to the bottom right-hand corner and click auto. If it's already selected candlestick, just click auto. The chart should adjust itself. Okay, so let's look at dollar cat. So dollar cat, we have it. Let's just start off with the daily. Okay. Look at okay, what we have right now is okay. There's a completed movement, okay, from a swing low here. Okay, from a swing low to a swing high. If it's hard for you guys to see a completed movement, all right, you always change the line chart and you can see the big movement, right? The big movement, right? So from swing low to swing high, what we can do is we can use Fibonacci retracement, right? We want to see how far price has come back. Okay, so we use Fibonacci retracement from the low to the high. And you look at what happened. I'm going to zoom in on this area, okay? Price actually tapped the 6180 level. Okay, price actually tapped the 6180 level. Of course, there is the negative expansion of the negative 2720 over here, right? I'm, I'm saying if uh, price is if price is going to go higher after tapping the 6180, I'm expecting price to push higher. If I'm expecting price to push higher, what I'll do is there is a zigzag here, right? We are seeing a zigzag forming. This is a regular zigzag. So we can use Fibonacci uh, extension. Okay, as over here, point 0.1 to point 0.2, all right, all the way down to point 0.3. Okay, look at that. We have, okay, we have the first target at 61.80, right? 61.80 is a graphical swing high possible. This can be the first take profit. Okay, I'm just showing confluence. That's where the Fibonacci levels, okay, when we say confluence, when we read, when, 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 when my colleagues, Desmond or myself or even Lee Singh say Fibonacci confluence, we mean that there is a lining up of multiple 
key Fibonacci levels, right? But when we say that there is a confluence of factors in the market, we don't just mean Fibonacci lining up. We also mean that Fibonacci levels line up with graphical levels. So graphical levels are imprinted by chart patterns, right? By the candlestick. So this is the first tick profit. If you switch to close, you can see that there is a graphical level over here, right? So that's the first tick profit. You can have your second tick profit, say maybe at the 100% level, right? You see the 100% level is in line with a graphical level over here, over here. If you switch to close, you can see that there's a graphical level and it's also very close to the negative 2720, right? So any this can then become a take profit zone, right? This can then become a take profit zone if you think that prices are going to push higher, all right? If you think that prices are going to push higher, okay? So this is how we use, okay? This is how we use, um, uh, this is how we use, where's the question? Okay, this is how we use uh, Fibonacci uh, retracement together with Fibonacci extension to find confluence levels. Okay, so uh, one of you, okay, Harin, you're saying that the chart is trending down. Should this be from top to bottom? Now, if you believe, okay, if you believe that the chart is downwards trending, right? So what does this mean? It means that you can wait for a key level. Okay, you wait for price to come back to a key level before going short. Okay, again, play in the direction of the trend is the safest, okay? So you're waiting for price to push back up, okay, da-da-da-da, push back up to the key level, okay? And then after that, that's where you enter a short. It's just like our example, okay? Over here, we have 100% Fibonacci extension, okay, projection for the future. We believe that the overall trend is downwards, but right now, you know, price is just doing a limited push up to a key level. Okay, and then we we have, we put our we put our entry over here, our sell entry. Sorry, our sell entry slightly before the key level. Our sell entry. Okay, and then of course, depending on how we trade, right? Uh, either we use a stop loss outside of market structure, or we find another key level, and then we put a stop loss beyond the key level, right? And then after that, we can look for possible take profits on the way down. And then you look what happened next. Price taps our entry and immediately retraces. Okay, so uh, you the idea is to understand first, okay, whether you think prices are upward trending or downward trending. Then you use Fibonacci extension together with Fibonacci uh, retracement to find Fibonacci confluence level. Even stronger is when this Fibonacci confluence level lines up with graphical levels. Right? And then we have an overall confluence where we get a very strong entry level to play that reaction off. All right, so I hope this answers all your questions. Uh, Danit, you're saying how many time frame to draw FIBO in one FX pair? You can draw Fibonacci on uh, any time frame. Okay, The beauty about Fibonacci is that it is fractal in nature. Okay, So let's quickly go to the, to the chart. Right? Okay, so what I have here is a uh, dollar cap. Okay, so example, I have dollar cap. I'm just going to remove all the, let me just uh, remove everything. Okay, except the, sorry, uh, give me a moment. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove this. Okay, so let's say, all right, price reacted, sorry, price reacted at the 61. There's a retracement. Price reacted at the 61.80, right? And now we're on a daily. Let me quickly zoom into the one hour. I'm sure I can find a Fibonacci level here as well. Okay, so the 61.80, I'm going to adjust it. Okay, something like that. So that's the 61.80 that we drew on the daily. Okay, that we drew on the daily, right? Now, because of this sharp spike, okay, it's going to be a bit tricky, but you have to look for the clear wave movement, okay? There is a clear wave movement saying down this way, okay? I don't like how it's chopping around the trend line, right? So, but if I really have to pick point one all the way down to point two, right? This is an irregular because the ending of point three is above the start of point one, right? So you can see, okay, this is a irregular. Very ugly, why? Because look at how price chops around the Fibonacci extension trend line. 
So I don't like that. Okay, I can look for another possible irregular area where price hugs the trend line quite nicely. This can be one. Okay, something like that, right? Not the not the nicest because of this of this spike, right? But if I were to open up a Fibonacci extension, say the two hundred level, okay, the two hundred percent. Look at how the two hundred percent lines up with the sixty one point eight. All right, and it's also a graphical swing low. So there's a very strong confluence here where you can actually play a price bounce, all right, to the next Fibonacci level. Okay, so uh, I, I, I hope uh, this answers your question. Okay? Okay, uh, in the interest of time, right, in the interest of time, just using Fibonacci to do an analysis on S&P 500, Okay, so let's just start off with the monthly. Monthly, okay, it's just a strong push. All right, this we can consider it as a regular zigzag, right? Look at the movement. Clear market structure. Okay, you can take this week as well. Okay, because uh, this week by comparison is not exactly very, very, very weird. Okay, so you can actually use this week in your Fibonacci extension. Right, and you have a 200% target over there. Okay, you can go down to a lower time frame. Right, if it's hard to see movements, there's actually another zigzag, a regular, goes up, comes down here, and continues going higher. In close, you can see it better. Okay, so you can use the another zigzag, Fibonacci extension, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Look at that, the 200% level is starting to line up with the 7640 on the weekly. So monthly, we have the 200%. Weekly, we have the 7640 or 7860, close enough. Let's go down to the daily. Okay, on the daily, we can zoom in on this area now. Right? This is a key zone, okay, key resistance zone. Right? What do we see? We see another zigzag, All right? a regular. We can draw another Fibonacci extension, 0.1. 0 0.2, 0 0.3. And look at that. The 161.8 is in line with our 200% on the monthly. So the daily 161.8 is in line with the 200% on the monthly. So this we're starting to see a very strong Fibonacci confluence level here right now in this uh, around the 4,300 zone on the S&P. So if anything, the S&P could be pushing up to the 4,300 zone. And if you want to go short, it is possible to go short from there because in the present, in the absence of graphical uh, levels, okay, the next strongest uh, clue that, that you can use for yourself is really finding Fibonacci confluence. All right, so I hope that uh, answers your question. All right. Okay, uh, okay, a lot of you are asking for analysis on different market pairs in the interest of time. I'm unable to do that. Okay, so again, I'm going to just uh, repeat to you guys. Uh, I didn't exactly cover the slides, but because of all your questions, okay, I did piece together combining Fibonacci extension with graphical levels and even, you see, so I mentioned Fibonacci confluence area, the graphical level, the swing low support. Right, and then we also have Fibonacci retracement together. So you see, in the absence, in this slide, in the absence of uh, graphical levels, okay, we do have strong Fibonacci confluence area which we can play off. Right, price just bounces off from there. Okay, so that is something that you guys can consider on the S and P. Right. So again, in the interest of time, for you, for those of you like Mac McWin, sorry, I am unable to give you an analysis on um, Dow and oil. Uh, to wrap everything up, I. One hour is never enough to cover things like Fibonacci extension and Fibonacci retracement. Uh, it is really, really, uh, it requires practice. Okay, uh, Yvonne, I know it's a bit confusing. Uh, but if, if, I, if there's anything that, 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 um, that I can give you guys a takeaway is that learn to identify the zigzags irregular or regular to draw the correct Fibonacci extension. Okay, so for today, if there's one takeaway that I want you guys to go off with is to learn to identify the correct zigzags, whether irregular or irregular, to draw the correct Fibonacci extension.